Something powerful happens when a child of God seeks to know more about Him and His beloved Son. Nowhere are those truths taught more clearly and powerfully than in the Book of Mormon. God always provides safety for the soul, and with the Book of Mormon He has again done that in our time. Remember this declaration by Jesus Himself, Whoso treasureth up my word shall not be deceived. And in the last days, neither your heart nor your faith will fail you. Chapter 9 I know that I should probably go to bed, but I cannot stop. This is 3rd Nephi, and this is the most beautiful part of all scripture in my mind. And truthfully, you know, I mean, doing these videos has been such a blessing for me, but my amazing husband is the real MVP. When I had um, this prompting come to me last summer, summer of 2023, I felt a lot of emotions, one super underqualified, because I thought there are so many amazing scriptorians out there that, that do this. They do, they are institute teachers and they they have these huge followings and they're come follow me things are great and i just thought the lord was like i told you to do it so do it stop thinking of reasons why you shouldn't and so i went to my husband shane and i told him this is what the lord's been telling me to do and it's going to be a ton of time and and he said do it do it. I think it's an awesome idea. I think that you're supposed to do it, so do it. And he has been so amazing and supportive. I'm so grateful for him. Um, and it's hard for me to stop. <laughs> so here we go. This is going to be some of the most beautiful words of scripture ever written. Chapter 9. In the darkness, the voice of Christ proclaims the destruction of many people and cities for their wickedness. He also proclaims his divinity, announces that the law of Moses is fulfilled, and invites men to come unto him and be saved. About A.D. 34. And it came to pass that there was a voice heard among all the inhabitants of the earth, upon, upon all the face of this land, crying, Woe, woe, woe unto this people, woe unto the inhabitants of the whole earth, except they shall repent. For the devil laugheth, and his angels rejoice, because of the slain of the fair sons and daughters of my people. And it is because of their iniquity and abominations that they are fallen. Behold, that great city Zarahemla have I burned with fire, and the inhabitants thereof. And that great city Moroni have I caused to be sunk in the depths of the sea, and the inhabitants thereof to be drowned. And behold, that great city Moroni have I covered with earth, and the inhabitants thereof to hide their iniquities and their abominations from before my face. The blood of the prophets and the saints shall not come any more unto me against them. And behold, the city of Gilgal have I caused to be sunk, and the inhabitants thereof to be buried up in the depths of the earth. Yea, and the city of Onaiha, and the inhabitants thereof, and the city of Mokum, and the inhabitants thereof, and the city of Jerusalem, and the inhabitants thereof. And waters have I caused to come up in the stead thereof, to hide their wickedness and abominations from before my face, that the blood of the prophets and the saints shall not come up any more unto me against them. And behold, the city of Gedeonhi, and the city of Gedeomna, and the city of Jacob, and the city of Gim Gimno, and all these have I caused to be sunk, and made hills and valleys in the places thereof, and the inhabitants thereof have I buried up in the depths of the earth, to hide their wickedness and abominations from before my face, that the blood of the prophets and the saints should not come up any more unto them, any more unto me against them. And behold, that great city, Jacobagath, which was inhabited by the king of King Jacob, have I caused to be burned with fire because of their sins and their wickedness, 
which was above all the wickedness of the whole earth because of their secret murders and combinations. So this is Christ saying that these secret combinations, these Gadiot and robbers, were the most wicked of any other group on earth. For it was they that did destroy the peace of my people and the government of the land. Therefore, I did cause them to be burned, to destroy them from before my face, that the blood of the prophets and the saints should not come up unto me any more against them. And behold, the city of Laman and the city of Josh and the city of Gad and the city of Kishkumen have I caused to be burned with fire and the inhabitants thereof because of their wickedness in casting out the prophets and stoning those whom I did send to declare unto them concerning their wickedness and their abominations. And because they did cast them all out, that there were none righteous among them, I did send down fire and destroy them, that their wickedness and abominations might be hid from before my face, that the blood of the prophets and the saints whom I sent among them might not cry unto me from the ground against them. And many great destructions have I caused to come upon this land and upon this people because of their wickedness and their abominations. O oh, all ye that are spared because ye were more righteous than they, will ye not now return unto me and repent of your sins and be converted that I may heal you? That verse, that phrase is one of the most beautiful phrases in all of scripture, that I may heal you. Christ does not want to come and condemn He's not here to just come and punish. He wants to heal us. I love that he says, return unto me. Will you not now return unto me? And he even says, you were more righteous than them, but you still need to repent. Return unto me, repent of your sins and be converted that I may heal you. The great healer wants to heal us too. That's all repentance is, is a turn back to him for healing. Like Elder Holland has said, church is a hospital. We all need healing because we all need repentance. We all need to repent every day, every day, every day. Yea, verily I say unto you, if ye will come unto me, ye shall have eternal life. Behold, mine arm of mercy is extended towards you, and whosoever will come, him will I receive, and blessed are those who come unto me. Behold, I am Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I created the heavens and the earth and all things that in them are. I was with the Father from the beginning. I am in the Father, and the Father in me. And in me hath the Father glorified his name. I came unto my own, and my own received me not. And the scriptures concerning my coming are fulfilled. And as many as have received me, to them have I given to become the sons of God. And even so will I to as many as shall believe on my name. He is not a discriminatory God. He wants anybody, everybody who believes on his name to come to him and be called his sons, the sons of Heavenly Father. For behold, by me redemption cometh, and in me is the law of Moses fulfilled. So now is the time that the law of Moses will be obsolete, because Christ fulfilled the law of Moses. I am the light and the life of the world. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And ye shall offer up unto me no more the shedding of blood. Yea, your sacrifices and your burnt offerings shall be done away. For I will accept none of your sacrifices and your burnt offerings. And ye shall offer for a sacrifice unto me a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And whoso cometh unto me with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, him will I baptize with fire and with the Holy Ghost, even as the Lamanites, because of their faith in me at the time of their conversion, were baptized with fire and with the Holy Ghost, and they knew it not. I think that that is more common than people think. Their baptism of fire, because he's saying here that the Lamanites were baptized with fire and with the Holy Ghost, and they didn't even know it. 
if you have been changed, if you have been made into a new creature, consider the things that have happened to you that you may not be aware of. And be prayerful about those things, and the Lord will answer for you. Behold, I have come unto the world to bring redemption unto the world, to save the world from sin. Therefore, whoso repenteth and cometh unto me as a little child, him will I receive. For of such is the kingdom of God. Behold, for such I have laid down my life and have taken it up again. Therefore, repent and come unto me, ye ends of the earth, and be saved. Be saved. Remember, Christ wants to heal us. Return to him and let him heal us. I told you this is the best part of the Book of Mormon. Chapter 10 There is silence in the land for many hours. The voice of Christ promises to gather his people as a hen gathers her chickens. The more righteous part of the people have been preserved. About A.D. 34-35 to And now behold, it came to pass that all the people of the land did hear these sayings and did witness of it. And after these sayings, there was silence in the land for the space of many hours. For so great was the astonishment of the people that they did cease lamenting and howling for the loss of their kindred, which had been slain. That's important. So they were able to have the understanding right after they're losing, they, right after they had lost so many people. We just read about all the carnage that happened, all of the tumultuous events that took place that killed so many people. Well, then they heard the voice of the Lord. Well, then they heard the voice of the Lord. They heard the Savior. And it says, So great was the astonishment of the people, they did cease lamenting and howling for the loss of their kindred, which had been slain. And there was silence in all the land for the space of many hours. So they're no longer feeling that intense sorrow. And it came to pass that there came a voice again unto the people, and all of the people did hear and did witness of it, saying, O ye people of these great cities which have fallen, who are descendants of Jacob, yea, who are of the house of Israel, how oft have I gathered you as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and have nourished you? And again, how oft would I have gathered you as a hen gathereth her chicken, chickens under her wings? Yea, O ye people of the house of Israel, who have fallen, Yea, O ye people of the house of Israel, ye that dwell at Jerusalem, as ye that have fallen, yea, how oft would I have gathered you as a hen gathereth her chickens, and ye would not. O ye house of Israel, whom I have spared, how oft will I gather you? So it's really cool because he says, this is what the Lord does for me. I've never noticed this before, but I think... I think this is important. He says first in verse four, how oft have I gathered you? Verse five, how oft would I have gathered you? Verse five again, how oft would I have gathered you? Verse six, how oft will I gather you? I think those tenses are important and I've never noticed them before. And I'm sure there are people listening that have and probably think, come on, Tiff, how did you not know? But I hadn't noticed that. And I think it's saying how the Lord is merciful and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And showing us he will continue to gather us. He's not done. Even though we need continual repentance and continual correction, the Lord is not done gathering us. Verse 6, O ye house of Israel, whom I have spared, how oft will I gather you as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, if ye will repent and return unto me with full purpose of heart. Full purpose of heart requires change. Repentance is change. But if not, O house of Israel, the places of your dwelling shall become desolate until the time of the fulfilling of the covenant to your fathers. And now it came to pass that after the people had heard these words, behold, 
they began to weep and howl again because of the loss of their kindred and friends. And it came to pass that thus did the three days pass away, and it was in the morning, and the darkness dispersed from off the face of the land, and the earth did cease to tremble, and the rocks did cease to rend, and the dreadful groanings did cease, and all the tumultuous noises did pass away. So for those three days, it wasn't just dark and like thick darkness. It also, the earth was undergoing all of these same calamities, earthquakes, fires, um, dreadful groanings. When we had our earthquake here in Utah, you could hear it. It was really eerie. I remember hearing it was like a deep groan in the earth. And the earth did cleave together again that it stood. And the mourning and the weeping and the wailing of the people who were spared alive did cease. And their mourning was turned into joy. And their lamentations into the praise and thanksgiving unto the Lord Jesus Christ, their Redeemer. So again, their sorrows are comforted in the Savior Jesus Christ. And thus far were the scriptures fulfilled which had been spoken by the prophets. And it was the more righteous part of the people who were saved. And it was they who received the prophets and stoned them not. And it was they who had not shed the blood of the saints who were spared. And they were spared and were not sunk and buried up in the earth. And they were not drowned in the depths of the sea. And they were not burned by fire, neither were they fallen upon and crushed to death. And they were not carried away in the whirlwind, neither were they overpowered by the vapor of smoke and of darkness. And now whoso readeth, let him understand. This is us, right? We're the ones reading this. So he says, let him understand. He wants us to understand this. He that hath the scriptures, let him search them. That's our job, you guys. We don't just read. We don't just listen. We search and ponder and pray and study these scriptures. So he who hath the scriptures, that's us, let him search them. And see and behold, if all these deaths and destructions by fire and by smoke and by tempest and by whirlwinds and by the openings of the earth to receive them and all these things are not until the fulfilling of the prophecies of many of the holy prophets. Behold, I say unto you, yea, many have testified of these things at the coming of Christ and were slain because they testified of these things, yea, the prophet Zenos did testify of these things, and also Zenos spake concerning these things, because they testified particularly concerning us, who are the remnant of their seed. So remember, we've talked about Zenos before. Zenos is the one that I think came up with this allegory of the olive tree that Jacob quotes in Jacob 5, that is so important about being grafted in and having different parts of the vineyard burned at a time. I mean, anyway, you can go back and watch that video or go back and read Jacob 5 um, to get more details of that. But there's not a lot that we know about Zenos except that he was an incredible prophet. And here it says, the prophet Zenos did testify of these things and also Zenos spake concerning these things because they testified particularly concerning us who are the remnant of their seed. Behold, our father Jacob also testified concerning a remnant of the seed of Joseph. And behold, are not we a remnant of the seed of Joseph? And these things which testify of us, are they not written upon the plates of brass, which our father Lehi brought out of Jerusalem? And it came to pass that in the ending of the thirty and fourth year, behold, I will show unto you that the people of Nephi who were spared, and also those who had been called Lamanites who had been spared, did have great favors shown unto them and great blessings poured out upon their heads insomuch that soon after the ascension of Christ into heaven, he did truly manifest himself unto them, showing his body unto them and ministering unto them and an account of his ministry shall be given hereafter. Therefore, for this time, I make an end of my sayings. And then it says, Jesus Christ did show himself unto the people of Nephi as the multitude were gathered together in the land bountiful and did minister unto them. And on this wise did he show himself unto them. That'll be chapters 11 through 26. Chapter 11. You guys, this is 
this is like the the chapter the culminating chapter of all scripture it's amazing here we go Jesus Christ did show himself unto the people of Nephi as the multitude were gathered together in the land bountiful and did minister unto them. And on this wise did he show himself unto them, comprising chapters 11 through 26. Chapter 11. The father testifies of his beloved son. Christ appears and proclaims his atonement. The people feel the wound marks in his hands and feet and side. They cry, Hosanna. He sets forth the mode and manner of baptism. The spirit of contention is of the devil. Christ's doctrine is that men should believe and be baptized and receive the Holy Ghost. About A.D. 34. And now it came to pass that there were a great multitude gathered together of the people of Nephi round about the temple. President Nelson said in conference of October 2023, he said, it is significant that the Savior chose to appear to his people at the temple. Just going to leave that there. Which was in the land bountiful, and they were marveling and wondering one with another, and were showing one to another the great and marvelous change which had taken place. And they were also conversing about this Jesus Christ of whom the sign had been given concerning his death. And it came to pass that while they were thus conversing one with another, they heard a voice as if it came out of heaven. And they cast their eyes round about for they understood not the voice which they heard. And it was not a harsh voice, neither was it a loud voice. Nevertheless, and notwithstanding it being a small voice, it did pierce them that did hear to the center insomuch that there was no part of their frame that it did not cause to quake. Yea, it did pierce them to the very soul and did cause their hearts to burn. And it came to pass that again they heard the voice and they understood it not. And again the third time they did hear the voice and did open their ears to hear it. And their eyes were towards the sound thereof and they did look steadfastly towards heaven from whence the sound came. For behold, the third time they did understand the voice which they heard. And it said unto them, Behold, my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased, and whom I have glorified my name, hear ye him. And it came to pass, as they understood, they cast their eyes up again towards heaven. And behold, they saw a man descending out of heaven, and he was clothed in a white robe. And he came down and stood in the midst of them, and the eyes of the whole multitude were turned upon him. And they durst not open their mouths, not even one to another, and wist not what it meant, for they thought it was an angel that had appeared unto them. And it came to pass that he stretched forth his hand and spake unto the people, saying, Behold, I am Jesus Christ, whom the prophets testified shall come into the world. And behold, I am the light and the life of the world. And I have drunk out of that bitter cup, which the Father hath given me. That was such a bitter cup, you guys. That was... We know because of the things that we've experienced in our own lives, how bitter... But magnify that for the entire world, everybody who's ever lived, and what he suffered. I have drunk out of that bitter cup, which the Father hath given me, and have glorified the Father in taking upon me the sins of the world, in the which I have suffered the will of the Father in all things from the beginning. And it came to pass that when Jesus had spoken these words, the whole multitude fell to the earth, for they remembered that it had been prophesied among them that Christ should show himself unto them after his ascension into heaven. So they first thought that he was an angel until he started to talk and tell them who he was and what he had done. And it came to pass that the Lord spake unto them, saying, 
Arise and come forth unto me, that you may thrust your hands into my side, and also that you may feel the prints of the nails in my hands and in my feet, that you may know that I am the God of Israel and the God of the whole earth, and have been slain for the sins of the world. And it came to pass that the multitude went forth and thrust their hands into his side and did feel the prints of the nails in his hands and in his feet. And this they did do, going forth one by one, until they had all gone forth and did see with their eyes and did feel with their hands and did know of a surety and did bear record that it was he of whom it was written by the prophets that should come. Where it says one by one, there is the most beautiful song called One by One that Elder Bednar and Paul Cardall wrote together. And it was inspired. Elder Bednar kept feeling like he needed to write a song. And the words of that song were inspired by this account of the Savior ministering and having each of these people come to him one by one. And the interactions that he has that we'll read about in the next few chapters are the words that inspired that beautiful song. I'll link that below if I remember. Sometimes I forget. If I forget, please write in the comments, you said you'd link it. <laughs> and so they all went one by one until they all had a chance to go and bear record that it was he of whom it was written that the prophet by the prophets that should come. And when they had all gone forth and had witnessed for themselves, they did cry out with one accord, saying, Hosanna, blessed be the name of the Most High God. And they did fall down at the feet of Jesus and did worship him. And it came to pass that he spake unto Nephi, for Nephi was among the multitude, that he commanded him that he should come forth. Can you guys feel the humility of Nephi? He's he's incredible he's among the multitude he's not up in the front he's not up introducing the savior he's not up there saying you guys this is the one i told you he bowed down and kissed the savior's feet it says nephi arose and went forth and bowed himself before the lord and did kiss his feet so the lord the savior calls him out of the multitude nephi come up to me So the Savior calls Nephi out of the multitude. Nephi, come unto me. And Nephi goes and bows himself down on the ground and kisses the Lord's feet. And the Lord commanded him that he should arise. So Christ is like, stand up. And he arose and stood before him. And the Lord said unto him, I give unto you power that you shall baptize this people when I am again ascended into heaven. And again, the Lord called others and said unto them likewise, and he gave unto them power to baptize. And he said unto them, on this wise shall ye baptize, and there shall be no disputations among you. Verily I say unto you that whoso repenteth of his sins through your words and desireth to be baptized in my name, on this wise shall ye baptize them. Behold, ye shall go down and stand in the water, and in my name shall ye baptize them. And now behold, these are the words which ye shall say, calling them by name, saying, Having authority given me of Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And then shall ye immerse them in the water, and come forth out of the water. And after this manner shall ye baptize in my name, for behold, verily I say unto you that the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost are one, and I am in the Father, and the Father in me, and the Father and I are one. And that's one in purpose. And according as I have commanded you, thus shall ye baptize, and there shall be no disputations among you, as there have hitherto been. Neither shall there be disputations among you concerning the points of my doctrine, as there have hitherto been. Remember, we talked about that. Among the most peaceful times is when people start to have these little dissensions, little disputations, uh, usually about scripture or doctrine. 
For verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hath the spirit of contention is not of me, but is of the devil, who is the father of contention. And he stirreth up the hearts of men to contend with anger one with another. Behold, this is not my doctrine, to stir up the hearts of men with anger one against another. But this is my doctrine, that such things should be done away. Behold, verily, verily, I say unto you, I will declare unto you my doctrine. And this is my doctrine. So this is, this is really important because Christ here is introing, I'm going to tell you what my doctrine is. And then he, he will say in a few verses, and that was my doctrine. So listen for it. We got to hear it in these verses right here, okay? Verse 32, and this is my doctrine. And it is the doctrine which the Father hath given unto me. And I bear record of the Father, and the Father beareth record of me. And the Holy Ghost beareth record of the Father and me. And I bear record that the Father commandeth all men everywhere to repent and believe on my name. And whoso believeth in me and is baptized, the same shall be saved, and they are they who shall inherit the kingdom of God. So repent, believe in him, be baptized. And whoso believeth not in me and is not baptized shall be damned. Verily, verily, I say unto you that this is my doctrine. So doctrine, here's my doctrine. This is my doctrine. What's in the middle here is knowing who Heavenly Father is, knowing who the Savior is, knowing who the Holy Ghost is, and then repenting, believing on Christ, being baptized. That's the doctrine. And we know when we're baptized, we make covenants with the Lord. And we renew those covenants every Sunday when we go to church and partake of the sacrament. And if we're doing it right, we come with repentant hearts and contrite spirits, broken hearts, and come to the Lord and say, Heavenly Father, I need thee every minute of every hour. That is the Lord's doctrine. Verily, verily, I say unto you that this is my doctrine, and I bear record of it from the Father. And whoso believeth in me, believeth in the Father also. And unto him will the Father bear record of me. For he will visit him with fire and with the Holy Ghost. And thus will the Father bear record of me. And the Holy Ghost will bear record unto him of the Father and me. For the Father and I and the Holy Ghost are one. And again I say unto you, ye must repent and become as a little child. And be baptized in my name. Or ye can in no wise receive these things. And again I say unto you, ye must repent and be baptized in my name. And become as a little child, or ye can in no wise inherit the kingdom of God. When things are repeated in the Book of Mormon, it means they're really important. When they're repeated by the Savior himself, it means they are absolutely crucial. He says twice here, become as a little child and be baptized in my name. Well, repent, become as a little child and be baptized in my name. And then he says it again, repent, become as a little child, and be baptized in my name. And you can in no wise inherit the kingdom of God. Verily, verily, I say unto you that this is my doctrine. And whoso buildeth up this buildeth upon my rock. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against them. This was cool because in conference, a few different speakers, and remember, they, they are not assigned topics. A few different speakers specifically talked about the rock of our Redeemer and having our foundation attached to the rock. And they specified that the foundation is not um, the rock. It's different. The rock of our Redeemer, the foundation needs to be completely securely attached to the rock, to the ground to the savior so we build our foundation and securely attach it to our savior and that's what keeps us strong in an earthquake the foundation will move but if it's firmly attached to the base underneath the foundation that's that's where we're going to be okay that's our savior that's our testimony and the gates of hell shall not prevail against them 
And whoso shall declare more or less than this and establish it for my doctrine, the same cometh of evil. And it is not built upon my rock, but he buildeth upon a sandy foundation. And the gates of hell stand open to receive such when the floods come and the winds beat upon them. Therefore go forth unto this people and declare the words which I have spoken unto the ends of the earth. The Savior is here. He's here now, and he's speaking to the Nephites. And he's also here, and he's also um, guiding and directing and leading every detail of this church. I testify that that is true. I know that he's in his temples. I know that he is involved in every intricate detail there every change of wording every painting all the faint music that you hear during different ordinances he is in all of it he's in all of it he is at the head of this church this is his church and our leaders are not here to apologize for his doctrine and they won't they wouldn't dare and we shouldn't dare either what the lord has spoken he has spoken and it's our job to defend him and like elder holland said he had to walk the lonely road alone once the dia doloroso the road of pain and elder holland says don't let him do it again alone we now are with him to defend him and support him and strengthen him and give him our whole hearts. Not have fear based off what people will say or what they'll do or what they might think of us or thinking that people know your faults and know your weaknesses. <laughs> Look at the people in the scriptures. David, Saul, Paul, Alma the Younger. We have example after example of people who, even Lehi, I mean, Lehi complained at different points, and he was an incredible prophet. Don't let those things stop us from defending the Lord and standing up as a witness of him at all times, in all things, and in all places. I know he lives. I know he leads and guides this church. I know it. And I leave that with you in the name of Jesus Christ.